Hello and welcome to the 59th video in this series programme of Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to implement the alpha beta. And just before I go into it, the alpha beta is actually very similar to what we had in our perfed function here. We do the identical thing here, we check the board's OK. If the depth is zero, then we'll return the evaluation of the position from the point of view of the side to move, which we've already written. Then we'll generate all our moves, loop through our moves, We'll get our score for the move because we're returning our evaluation and we'll change the bounds of alpha and beta accordingly. So how we're going to go about this then is, and I'm just going to paste in and talk through the code as, as usual. First of all, we'll check the board's OK in debug mode. And like I said, if the depth is zero, we'll increment the number of positions we've visited nodes and return the evaluation for the position. Otherwise, we carry on. We'll increment the nodes again because the depth wasn't naught, but we've visited a node, so we'll increment the value here. It looks a little odd to have both of these here, but essentially this will come out when we have the call to the quiescence search in here instead of the evaluation. Remember I talked about the quiescence and the horizon effect? Well, just for now, will go without the quiescence and this will actually then come out we'll be returning quiescence and this info nodes will go into quiescence here so it'll still be incremented but for now we'll just have this here and the next thing to do is we've got to do some checkups at the start of the function sorry there was a pause there with a a muted sneeze. So the first thing we need to do, we need to say if it's a repetition or our 50 move rule is greater than or equal to 100, it means that the position is a draw. So we'll return a zero. The next thing is if our ply, so our half moves in this position, is greater than max depth minus one, then we've gone too deep or we're at the maximum depth we can allow because remember our principal variation only goes up to uh, array only holds this many moves, max depth moves, so we'll just return the evaluation straight away. And it's rare that you reach this, but in some endgame positions with a pawn and a king on the board or something, then you can see this being reached, particularly when you've implemented a transposition table or a hash table. And now we've done all that checking up, we're at the position where we can start making our move loop, which is, like I said, extremely similar to the perfed. I'll just make some space down here. So what it involves is making our move list and generating all of our moves. We have our move num here to loop through the moves. We've got something called legal here, which when we actually make a move and it's a legal move, we'll increment this. And this is for once we've gone through the whole move loop, if we haven't found any legal moves, then the position is either checkmate or stalemate. And you'll see how this is then used to return either the stalemate or the checkmate score. We record what alpha is before we start doing the moves because when we finish looping through the moves, if alpha is no longer equal to old alpha, then we will store the best move found in our principal variation because it means we found a move which beat alpha. We set our current score minus infinite. This will record what's returned by the calls to alpha beta. And obviously, we have our best move as well. So the next part is to make the loop, which should be fairly standard stuff. And I'm just going to paste all of this in here because it's very similar to Perth with a couple of changes. So we loop through the moves. We continue if it's not a legal move. Otherwise, we increment our legal count. And now we use the negamax. You remember from the minmax and alpha beta videos, we say the minus alpha beta with minus beta minus alpha to flip the bounds around and negamax the score. Depth minus one, we decrease the depth, our position our info, and we'll ignore this true for the null move for the moment. Then when we've gone in there, we take back the move. And now we say, and hopefully you remember about alpha and beta from the video, if the score is greater than alpha, then we're going to improve alpha. If the score is also greater than or equal to beta, then we've got a beta cutoff and we'll return beta straight away. Otherwise, we set alpha equal to the score and we now take our best move as this move and we keep leap it looping through the moves so that should be after the alpha beta video relatively clear what's going on there and that's the most complicated bit of all of this code 
The next thing to do is detect the mate and the stalemate. So once we finish looping the moves, if legal is zero, so we haven't had any legal moves, then we say if king square of our side is attacked by the opposite side, remember this exclusive or here to switch the side, then we're in check. So if we're in check and we haven't got any legal moves, by definition we're in mate. So we return minus mate score, because we've been mated, plus the play, which gives us the distance to mate from the root. So if we've made five moves to get to this mate position, then at the root position, obviously, it's mate in five. So we return this score in this way. And later on, when we refine things in the search position function, sorry, down the bottom here, if we see a score that is within mate score minus 64, so we know it's a mate score that's occurred somewhere in the position, we'll use this mate score minus the play to find out how many moves it was to mate, and we can print out here then mate in 5 or 6 or whatever. So that's why we return this score in this fashion. And also, of course, we do it this way because if in the tree we find a mate in 5, but somewhere else we find a mate in 3, then obviously the mate in 3 score will be better, or worse in this case, from the side is being mated, and therefore will be seen as the better move, so it finds the shortest path to mate also. Otherwise, if it's not a mate, then we simply return 0 because it's a stalemate and a draw. And the last thing to do down the bottom of the function is to say, if our alpha is no longer equal to old alpha, it means we improved alpha, which means we'll have stored a best move if we hadn't returned a beta cutoff, in which case we just returned anyway from the function. So we can store in our position this best move for this position that we've searched, which will then end up in our PV array. And at the end of all this, we then return alpha. So if we don't improve alpha at all, we just simply end up returning alpha, which you'll remember from the alpha beta video. So that's all there is to it, to the alpha beta search. Once you've watched the video and understood, one, how the negamax is working, to always allow the score to be returned from this item move's point of view, then, and to flip the bounds and, and multiply the bounds by minus one, then it becomes fa fairly simple to visualize. And the only slightly complicated bit is with the bounds here, but like I said, that's already been talked through in the alpha beta video. And believe it or not, we've actually implemented, every, implemented everything we need to do now to actually search a position. We're not going to play a game yet against another engine on a GUI because we need to still implement quiescence. We still need to implement something here to check whether the time has run out, run out or we've had an interruption from the GUI. But what we will do in the next video, just to show you what's happening, we'll actually feed through the console a couple of positions to the engine and see what it actually produces as its depth and score. And we'll also feed a mate in three position to the engine as well and see if it finds our mate in three. So I hope that's made some sense and thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.